classmates. I don't live in a fancy New York gated community or at the top floor of a fancy sky rise with some eccentric billionaire or corporate hedge fund parent. I lived in a small apartment, a two bedroom, two train stops away from my high school. I lived with two immigrant parents who were always supporting. We ate dinner together whenever my parents did not have overtime. And our family dinners were full of lively jokes, and we would talk about everything, from politics to my teachers. My father was a cop, and my mother was a mailwoman. While their jobs were hard, they needed to work, because despite my scholarship, school was still expensive alongside rent, even in the Bronx. I'm a black 14-year-old from the Bronx, and my greatest joys are my two dogs, hip-hop music, that I ran about with my best friend John Manny, a.k.a. Jay Busy, and reading. I am definitely not good with girls or authority, as my mom would tell me in her heavy Spanish accent, Alexander. Girls don't want to talk about the newest scientific discovery. As I told her about my social awkwardness in high school, my dad's advice was, work hard. Initially, my parents were unaware of the prestige of my high school, until they told their co-workers. They began to feel more proud about my attendance as they spoke to their co-workers. However, they cannot really express their pride in my success. So, my parents pat me on the shoulder and told me that my success is normal, because I was always smart. I never thought of myself as smart, because I have always enjoyed learning. I enjoy learning because my mind is constantly spinning and uncomfortable without being able to confront a complex problem or a difficult field of study. I put on my school uniform, a maroon sweater, maroon tie, white shirt, gray pants, and black shoes. Despite my love of hating authority, I enjoyed uniform because it reduced unnecessary decisions that helped with classroom performance. I told my parents and dogs, Ali and Tyson, see y'all later, and headed to the one train. After walking a couple of blocks of Odega before the train, I saw folks standing on the streets, staring at their phones and blocking my way. I heard people gasp, but a rule in New York is to mind your own business. I went into Bodega and said, Hey! To Mohammed, the greatest chopped cheese and bagel with cream cheese creator in New York City, who was behind the glass display of meats and cheeses, but his stove was turned off which is something you never see in a Bronx bodega. He was staring at the TV, murmuring what sounded like a prayer. I turned around and my jaw dropped. 